Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me here before you to preserve life. 
For the famine has been in the land here two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, a lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read together a portion of Psalm 119 as printed in your bulletin, responsibly by whole verse. You are righteous, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. You have issued your decrees with justice. My indignation has consumed me, because my enemies forget your words. Your word has been and I am small and of little amount, yet I do not forget your commandments. Your justice is everlasting justice, and your law is true. Trouble and distress have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samantha Trace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Tyratea and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord.
Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man there named Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree just to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Well, good afternoon. My name's... Thanks, Andrew. I heard you over there. My name's Chad Sanuda. I'm the Director of Young Adult and Communication Ministries for the Episcopal Diocese of Kansas. And uh, I just want to first thank Bishop Bascom for asking me to preach this, this afternoon. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I might be one of the few lay preachers to ever preach at this service. And um, we'll see if that's a good idea or not. I guess we're, gonna, we're, about, to, <laughs> we're about to find out. We're trying a new experiment and we'll, we'll do it together. We'll see how it goes. Um, I, I'm going to try to do my best for you. But I'm truly honored and humbled uh, to, to be asked by Bishop Bascom to do this. Um, and I, I want to also say just a quick thank you to both Bishop Bascom um, and Bishop Wolf for being such wonderful mentors and part of my personal formation um, as a Christian, as a leader in the church. I'm grateful for you both, and that I get to be here with you. Um, they have played such instrumental roles in my life, and I'm just so grateful for that. Uh, as we begin this morning, I, I hope this doesn't make you feel dismayed, but I'm aware, or probably this afternoon, um, I'm aware that the person who might be the most impacted by this is me. <laughs> and, and, let me and let me explain to you what I mean. Um, before working in ministry, I was a high school teacher for seven years. And one of the things in education that we talk about is if you want a student to retain knowledge or to remember something, one of the best things that we can do is ask them to teach it to someone else. I see some, I got some educators, you're all nodding out there, right? Yeah, so all my, all my teachers are out there, yeah, yeah, preach it. Um, so it's, it's very true that if, and that's why our teachers ask us to give presentations and demonstrations and do these things, because they know that we will remember it if we have the opportunity to teach it to someone else. And so, I'm grateful for this opportunity because I've had the last few weeks to spend with these scriptures and thinking about our theme and all that. Um, and I want to again thank Bishop Bascom for modeling, empowering lay leaders. Because when we give lay leaders um, this opportunity, I think only good things can happen. Uh, 
They often say that, you know, the, the preacher sometimes quit preaching and went to meddling. I'm going to meddle right at the beginning, okay? I want to start with the meddling. <laughs> um, and I just want to encourage uh, those of you who are in clergy leadership in, in churches, and I'm, I'm so grateful for, for Mother Dawn for what you're doing at St. James, um, to empower lay leaders, to give away those leadership opportunities. That it's only a blessing to that person and, and to the church. And so the more that we can do that, I just think it's a wonderful thing. And I'm grateful to Bishop Bascom for modeling that for us. And again, we'll find out if it's a good idea or not. We'll see. The verdict's still out. So um, as we've heard, our theme is to go. Okay, that was pretty good. Let's do it again. Our theme is to go. Awesome. And we learned about the Council of Trustees strategic goals for the diocese. Um, I have been part of the working group on mission and invitation. And uh, so as we talk today, I'm gonna look at the uh, theme of invitation in their scriptures. But I wanna start with a story. And I wanna ask you a question. Have you ever wanted to see something so bad that nothing could stop you? Can you think of time in your life where you wanted to see something so bad that nothing was gonna get in your way. Well, I wanna share a, one such moment in my life. I want you to picture a, a much younger Chad Sanuda. It's November 24th, it's 1987. He's 15 years old, and the very popular Irish rock band, U2, has come to his hometown, okay? Now, I was a huge fan of U2, and this is one of the concerts, you know, of the time. It was a big deal and I desperately wanted to go. Let me, let me fill in a few more facts. It's November 24th, there's one more day of school before Thanksgiving break. It's a school night, it's Tuesday night. I'm 15 years old, I don't have a car or a license. I don't have a ticket to the show. <laughs> Is it sounding likely that I'm gonna go? All right, I don't have a ticket. So uh, I don't have a means to get there, oh yeah, I lived in Dallas, Texas. The show is in Fort Worth, 50 miles away. <laughs> it's 7 p.m. on a school night. I'm at my, friend's Jen my friend Jennifer Johnson's house. We're doing our English homework. Just the likelihood I'm going to make it to this concert is not likely, but I, I really wanted to go. And so I invited my friend Jennifer to consider the possibility that she could drive us to this concert because Jennifer did have a license in a car. And so, of course she wanted to, but I had to ask her parents as well. So I invited her parents to consider the possibility that it would be a great idea for us to go to this concert. And somehow I talked them into it. I don't, I don't know how, but I did. And my friend Jennifer had one of those really nice like Mustang GTs, and we may or may not have broken a speed limit, I don't know, and we drove fairly fast, from Dallas to Fort Worth, we found Scalper outside, we got our tickets, and we went inside, and it was worth it. I'll just say that, it was worth it. And still it feels like a triumphant moment in my life, a moment where I wouldn't let the obstacles stop me. And I got to have this amazing experience. Um, for those of you who are U2 fans, that particular concert is, is on the movie Rattle and Hum, and uh, also there's a performance there where they performed with B.B. King, which is pretty cool. So I also got to see B.B. King that night. So that moment, pretty special for me. And I'm coming up on the like 36th anniversary or something like that. So, so U2 has been kind of a part of my life. I'm a big fan of music and rock music. And that band that I wanted to see so badly in 2014, they wrote a song about being seen. And that song is called Invisible. And that song was really written around two themes. One, Bono, the lead singer, at the time he wrote it, he was 18, when he wrote the lyrics, and he was having a very tumultuous relationship with his own father and desperately wanting to be seen by his own father. And his young band at the time, U2, was desperately wanting to be seen by new audiences. And so the song is about not wanting to be invisible. It's about wanting to be seen. 
And then the end of the song kind of breaks into this beautiful refrain of wanting to break down barriers between everyone, between band and audience, between human beings. And it breaks into this simple refrain that is just, there is no them, there's only us. There is no them, there's only us. And that refrain has been with me lately. It feels prophetic. It feels prophetic to our time. It feels like it speaks to so much of what we need to hear, what we see around us, what we see in the world, what we see in politics, what we see in conflict around the world. There is no them. There's only us. And yeah, I'm going to sing it to you. I am. There is no them. There is no them. There's only us. Only us. There is no them. There is no them. There's only us. Only us. There is no them. There is no them. There's only us. Only us. Oh, you guys sound good. All right. A little drink. Find some dry mouth up here. Okay. So that song feels powerful to me. And I hear that song sort of, I hear Bono in an angelic choir, like singing in the background of all these, of all of these readings today. There is no them. There's only us. And the story of Joseph and his brothers, there's this incredible power role reversal that happens where Joseph, who is sold into slavery by his brothers, now is the one in power and his brothers are in front of him. And what does Joseph say? Come closer. It's this beautiful invitation. Come closer. And he tells his father, come down to me. Come closer. Come down. And I hear Bono in the background. There is no them. You just hear it. Because it would have been very easy for Joseph to turn his brothers into a them. Because that's what they did to him. Turned him into a, an other. It would have been very easy for him to do that. But instead, he's reconciled with them. And then I hear it again with the story of Lydia. I love the story of Lydia. The story of Lydia is so powerful. The disciples are preaching the gospel in Greece, Macedonia, and Philippi. And they're out on the edge of the city. And there's this woman there. And what do we find out about Lydia? Lydia was a worshiper of God. This detail is really compelling to me. I really love this, that this is what is pointed out. This is how Lydia is described. This is the first thing that we find out. She's a worshiper of God. And it's interesting to me that it's not really specified any particular way. Could have said that she was a Gentile, could have said that she was a pantheist or a Hellenist. Or, I mean, it could have given us some kind of, some kind of tag or name, but just she's a worshiper of God. She loves God. She has a desire for God, a yearning for God. And so as she hears the preaching of the disciples, it says that the Lord opened her heart. The Lord opened her heart. And then an invitation. Come and stay at my house. She invites them over. Come and stay at my house. And that invitation, that hospitality, essentially welcomes the disciples into Europe. Essentially brings the gospel into a new continent. And I hear Bono. There is no them. Can you hear it? There is no them. So, and then we get to Zacchaeus. And you guys, I have heard this passage so many times, and it's one that we hear in Sunday school and we've, we've heard so often in church, and I was really struggling with what am I going to be able to, to say to you about it that, that's new. Um, but Zacchaeus kind of worked on me uh, this, this time. 
Um, and I think part of it is because of the show, uh, The Chosen. Is anyone watching The Chosen? It's a pretty good show on Netflix about the life of Jesus and the disciples and Jesus' ministry. And it gives great context for what it would be like to be a tax collector. Uh, and harken back to my brother, Andrew, like, raise your hand if you like paying taxes. Okay, none of us, we don't like it, right? But in our time, it's very antiseptic. It's very distant. It's very kind of, uh, it just kind of happens out of our paycheck. It goes to a monolith over there. Um, goes to the government, to the IRS. In Jesus' time, you had to walk to a booth with your stuff and hand it to a guy. And if you didn't give it to the guy, then he could put you in handcuffs or have you killed or have all of your things turned into, you know, your assets to uh, pay off that debt. So it's no wonder that this man is, is, is despised in his community. <laughs> One of my youth pastors said that he probably climbed the tree because uh, he's afraid of like catching an elbow in the face. Uh, so Zacchaeus wants to see. He wants to see Jesus, and he is seen. Jesus notices him and beckons him, come down. We have another invitation. Come down. And I former English teacher, I can't not notice some symbolism here of come down and be on the same level. You're up here. Come be down here with the rest of us. Get out of that tree and be part of us. Get on our level. So, and then Jesus does this great thing of inviting himself over to Zacchaeus' house like one of the kids in my neighborhood growing up. Can I come over and jump on your trampoline? That, I mean, it kind of feels that way, right? And I love it. Let me come over to your house. And Zacchaeus is so overwhelmed that he offers to repay four times over what he has possibly, probably stolen from his neighbors. And this always shocks me. It seems hasty. It's like, really? Just like that? You were ready to essentially give away everything, it feels like. But as I was preparing for this, I had a new thought. What if Zacchaeus has been planning this all along? What if he was waiting for this opportunity? What if he was hoping for it? What if he was hoping, maybe the teacher will see me? Maybe the rabbi will look in my direction. Maybe he'll notice me. What will I do if he does? What will I say? How would I respond? What would I do? Maybe he's already worked it out. He's already rehearsed it. Okay, I'll give everything back. That's what I'll do. How much? How much should I give back? What's the right amount? I don't know. Maybe four, like four times? Is that right? Maybe I'll do four times. I guess four. And I just imagine him having this argument in his head, and then, and then all of a sudden, Jesus says, Zacchaeus. Come down. I think he's ready to be seen. I think he wants to be seen. Um, and by acknowledging and seeing Zacchaeus, Jesus restores him to the community. Jesus says, that's what I care about. That's what I want. Reconciliation, redemption, forgiveness, love, healing, wholeness, community. There is no them. There is no them. You know, as Episcopalians, we, we love the saying to preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. We love this saying. It's attributed to St. Francis. Um, I don't know if St. Francis actually said that or not, but it's often attributed to him. Uh, Preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. It's a great reminder to live a life of integrity that lines up with the gospel, to try to live like a Christian. It's a great line. As Bishop Baskin pointed out earlier, I think sometimes, as Episcopalians, we need to use some words. 
<laughs> we, need, we, need to get work, get, we need to work on our words. We are doing a great job, you are especially, you all are doing a great job of living lives of integrity, of trying to be true to this gospel and living lives of justice and caring for others and putting others first. We just need to learn how to talk about it. We need to learn how to do invitation. Come closer. Come down. Come over. Come to my house. Let me come to your house. We need to learn how to talk about what do we love about church and faith? Why is it meaningful for our lives? So that we can share that with someone else. So my friends, let us be people who endeavor to see and to be seen, to allow ourselves to be seen. Let's come closer. Let's come down out of our trees. And let's invite ourselves out in the communities in new ways so that we can share that love that Jesus has shared with us. Amen. There is no them. There is no them. There's only us. Only us. There is no them. In peace, let us pray to the Lord our God. For the growth of God's kingdom throughout the world, we pray to you, O God. Lord, for all baptized Christians, that they may discern their vocation to spread the gospel at all times and in all places, we pray to you, O God. For all who have not yet heard or believed in the gospel, and those who may have the opportunity to declare it to them. We pray to you, O God. For all whose ministry it is to respond to human need and suffering, and for all who preach the gospel and teach the truth, we pray to you, O God. That it may please you to relieve and protect all members of your church who suffer persecution for the faith throughout the world. We you, yes, Lord. That it may please you to prosper the ministry to immigrants and to the underprivileged in rural areas and in the inner cities. We you, yes, Lord. That it may please you to inspire faithful preaching of your holy gospel. We you, yes, Lord. That it may please you to enlighten all seekers and to strengthen all new converts. We you, yes, Lord. That it may please you to empower all the baptized for their daily life and work in your name. We you, yes, Lord. That it may please you to guide bishops, priests, and deacons, and all who minister in your church. We you, yes, Lord. That it may please you to deliver all nations and people from the cruelty of racism and nationalistic imperialism. That it may please you to enable sound learning and uphold the work of education in schools and learning centers everywhere. That it may please you to bless medical, agricultural, and economic missions done for your glory. that it may please you to guide and inspire all Bible translators that your word may be proclaimed in all tongues. We you, yes, Lord. That it may please you to restore unity among all who love you. We you, yes, Lord. God of peace, we pray for the people of Palestine and Israel in these perilous and dangerous times for all who are fear fearful for the safety of their loved ones and themselves, we pray that the assurance of unfailing love, even in the midst of danger, settles upon them. 
shelter them from despair, and protect them from harm. For all who are wounded, we pray that they find healing. For all who have died, we pray they find rest. For all who grieve, we pray they find comfort. For all leaders on all sides, we pray for a renewed will to lay down arms, for the strength to put grievances and wrongs suffered by their people to rest, and for the conviction to embrace a path of reconciliation and peace that preserves the rights and dignity of all your children. For the peaceful witness of all faith leaders, including Anglican clergy and lay leaders in the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East, and their primate, Archbishop Hussam Naon, God of mercy, help us to remember there is no border that can separate us from your great love and protection, no stone that can sound the well of your deep mercy. And we pray for all war-torn areas as well. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen us in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. be with you, man. God bless you. Good afternoon and welcome to your cathedral, Grace Cathedral in Topeka. Special welcome today to Bishop Kathleen, 
Thank you for being with us today, and thank you, uh, Bishop Wolf and uh, Ellen, for coming and joining us with us uh, today and for this time together. It's wonderful to have you back. Um, we have uh, some who have asked today about the windows that have been installed within the last year on the north wall. Of course, when you do this work, there's a lot that goes into developing the, the symbols and everything. So rather than me stand here and recapitulate all the details, I'll just say that inside um, All Saints Hall, on the table for uh, published authors, there's a small book that kind of explains the process that we went through, the decision-making process and, every, and uh, what some of it, uh, uh, the content is uh, in those windows. So I commend that to you. Uh, communion today will be at four stations, effectively. We'll have one underneath the pulpit, one underneath the lectern, and then we'll have two um, celebra the celebrant and the officiant at the rail, sharing the rail. And um, we are doing this today with uh, the, the wafer being intincted and put into your hands. So if you would hold your hands out to receive the, the wafer. There is, at the end of each of those stations, as you're leaving, you'll see a little bit of hand sanitizer, um, if that's something that would be helpful for you. There's gluten-free uh, wafers available. Just need to make that known to us when you come up, and we'll get that for you. And if you just uh, want to have a blessing today, just cross your arms over your chest to receive that blessing. Once more, welcome. If there's anything that we can do uh, for you while you're here, please let us know. If, if you've ever noticed that um, it seems the Spirit moves in the creation of liturgies and then surprises you, um, I was struck. Uh, we, we chose much of, of the prayers and the collects around mission with this theme of go, see, and be seen, but um, in light of various conflicts in our world, I was struck how fitting the collect is that we may remember, O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off, to those who are near. May we hold that collect close, uh, praying for the earth and the leaders um, at this time, and, and our giving will go uh, to uh, the Holy Land, and I'm going to turn it over to Canon Patrick to just share any specifics. Thank you, Bishop. Um, you'll note uh, in the offertory section um, on page nine of your bulletin that uh, we designated this afternoon the convention offertory uh, for, uh, to be donated to the American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem uh, for their humanitarian work uh, in, 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 in and around Jerusalem and the Holy Land. Um, it was one of their, in the hospitals that they administered that was hit uh, just a few, um, a few days ago. And, uh, and so they're in desperate need of that uh, support. Um, so please be generous. Uh, you can write a check or put cash in the plate, which will be collected, and we will send one, uh, one, one payment uh, to our friends with the American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem. Uh, or the QR code and website that is on page 9 of your bulletin gives you a way to donate directly if you would uh, prefer to do that um, in that timely of a fashion. Thank you for your generosity. Um, Whenever we have a diocesan liturgy, I just want to always make it a habit to just say thank you to the cathedral. Uh, it, it, is, it is our cathedral, um, as Dean Torrey said, but um, there are people for whom this is their regular worshiping congregation, and the uh, staff and administrators um, here at the cathedral are always so helpful to us in planning these liturgies, and the beauty of worship here um, is, uh, is, is, is made possible by um, their gift so, um, yes, Dean and Berger, thank you, staff, um, and thank you to uh, the ushers and the acolytes uh, and, and the altar guild and all the tech folks in the back who are giving of their time um, to be here uh, to help us through this uh, worship as well. Um, 
I, I always say thank you to the musicians when we have these diocesan liturgies, um, and, and I just want to say it, it's, it's always just amazing to have you uh, to lead us in this music. Um, and, uh, and so the usuals, Cathedral Choir and uh, Zachary and Donald, thank you so much. Um, but it's also great at convention, we have some, some guest choir members um, from, I, I think I see St. Uh, St. Davidians, and I see some, I was trying to think about what St. Jamesians are called. They're what? <laughs> Brothers of the Lord? Well, I was thinking, it's in Spanish, it's Santiago, so you're probably Santiago's, uh, possibly. And St. John's, I, I heard of St. John's, maybe? Anyway, thank you so much for giving of your time um, and your uh, gifts today to support us in this worship. Um, Obviously, Dr. Christy Baker Lampy is an incredible talent and gifted uh, leader over at St. David's. Thank you for playing. Thank you for offering to play. And then we're also going to be treated um, during the anthem today and then also during communion to um, the gifts and uh, stylings of Dr. David Luttrell from St. Paul's in Manhattan. Thank you. Thank you for being here as well. I already gave you so much inter information about where you're going after Eucharist today, but just remember there's a map in your green check-in folder. It's just down 8th. There's parking all over the place. We'll see you over there um, for uh, some fun this, this evening. Bishop and offered sentence. That bishop. that bishop. This is when the handoff happens. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and has given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and dead, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice, praise, and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father,
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, God Heavenly God, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food in the sacrifice of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sympathy of heart through Christ our Lord. The peace of God, which surpasses our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.